Remember that the IRS wants to be your silent partner. If you start a hot dog stand, the, even if it was a, a bad hot dog, it was an illegal hot dog stand, you didn't get the proper authority, you've been selling hot dogs that are moldy, they, they're old, they're not up to snuff, but you still made money. Uh, the IRS wants their cut of that is the general idea, just like they want their cut of Al Capone's money, even though Al Capone wasn't doing up on board, upboard stuff, right? So that's the general idea. But if you lose money, if your hot dog stand loses money, the IRS doesn't want a piece of that, right? They don't want to pay you for the loss that you sustained on their behalf as part of their partnership. Because what could you do? You could take that loss and write it off against other income that you had, like W-2 income or possibly some other forms of income, investment or something like that. And the IRS doesn't is less likely to want to do that. Now, you might be able to do that, right? So you might be able to say, if I had a loss, I might be able to take that loss against other income. But you can you can imagine that the IRS is going to be skeptical of that because they want a piece of your earnings, your winnings, not of <laughs> your losses, right? So that means that you're going to want to make sure that you have the justification that you have a business intention and so on and so forth. Uh, if you're in a situation where you have losses, which isn't a problem because many businesses do have losses when they start out. I've run, I mean, I've, my business started at a, at a loss, right? right bef that's typical in order to, in order to get things uh, up and up and running uh, until hopefully you have income in the future, which you would think should be a legitimate deduction somewhere because the initial investment was needed to generate revenue. It's just the revenue didn't happen until the future. Uh, and so in any case, we got that question. What are my rights as a taxpayer? So we can go into the taxpayer rights. You know, you've got the, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And we're not talking, we're talking about the taxpayer uh, rights uh, in, in, in this case. And obviously, if it's a government entity, you would think some rights would include things like transparency, like due process, proper communication, and, and that kind of thing. Where do I go if I need help? with the federal tax matters business meal expenses now meal expenses has always been kind of a an issue with taxes because it's one of those things that you could consider is it business or is it personal we always imagine those you know people that are going out for lavish dinners and whatnot and then trying to write it off on the taxes and so on and so forth so uh there was a temporary 100 percent a deduction for business meal expense and it has expired now so this business meal deduction reverts back to the previous 50 percent allowable deduction beginning january 1st 2023 so we're back to what most people if you've worked in taxes uh, are are familiar with which is that like 50 percent of it is deductible you've got this whole question of is it is it travel or is it meals? And if it's meals, is it personal or is it business? And then if we get to deduct it, we get the 50% deduction instead of the 100% deduction. So there's that. We can, we'll possibly dive into that in more detail later. See meals and lodging later for more information.